Well, I've managed to come up with a part two. Hopefully this will be the last part. I did mention if anybody has any questions and concerns, they can uh, be addressed in the comment section. And I was thinking about doing a live stream that might address a topic like this. But I just wanted to be thorough and make sure I reiterated some points, uh, went over some things in the last video and explained some new things. Maybe give you guys some ideas on some questions you might have for me if you wanted to ask any and find out what the process this is like anyway this california native is now in arizona and let's get started with the show listeners and subscribers hope all is well california carter coming at you again with a part two for why and how i left california this is going to be a follow-up to my previous video I understand that there was some things that I left out and I probably got caught off on a tangent as I normally do and I just wanted to reiterate some points from the from the previous video and talk about some things that I didn't talk about uh, so I think the first thing I want to say is anytime you're going to approach a, a problem or tackle anything it's probably easier to do it in a group or if at least if you have one other individual to help keep the positive momentum uh, going especially if we're talking about leaving a state and if you're leaving a state it, it's probably easier to do with somebody else See, i was lucky and i had a wife and we were able to make it work uh, the two of us but some people are by themselves and they're looking to get out of uh, california so what do you do uh, again, I'm not going to get too deep into what I've already said. Uh, I, I believe saving is the number one thing you're going to do. And I believe going to a place that makes sense to you is, is probably the best. And that means a place that's going to be cheaper or within your price range, a place that's not going to turn into the place that you are trying to leave from. Um, also, you might want to consider doing some research and if you're a first time home buyer, what those kind of details are going to encompass. Or if you're looking to rent an apartment, uh, make sure your credit is good. Make sure you have, you know, typically two years of work history. Um, if you make two times the the rent for, uh, for the apartments. I mean, if you've already moved around in apartments before, as I said, it's not too difficult different um, when you're leaving another state the only difference really is the the, the distance and that can be uh, a hurdle uh, I personally rented a u-haul and I was able to get everything into a 16 foot u-haul and I packed it all in there I mean we have enough furniture we have uh, two two bedrooms both with full furniture sets a living room with you know two big couches we were all able to get it to fit so some of the things you're going to have to take into account is um, the transportation you're going to use to move your stuff to the next location you're also going to want to make sure if you're buying a house or you're you follow and research the intricacies of that because you're going to need down payment you're going to need the inspection cost you're going to need a uh, closing cost in most cases depending on what the deal is if it's an apartment it's a little bit easier you know that way typically your water garbage and sewage is covered you don't have to worry about that uh, if anything goes wrong in the apartment you can tell your landlord hey this needs fixing and the dollar isn't on you as it would be if you were buying a home remember with a home you have to worry about mortgage you have to worry about homeowners insurance uh, there's a lot of factors there to consider and as I said in my previous video me and my wife were completely blindsided by some of the unforeseen costs I, I think we had some lofty goals there in the beginning because we were going to you know instead of renting we were gonna go straight and, and buy a house out here and then if, if Arizona ended up not working out we would be able to sell it and uh, we, we, we uh, like I said, we had to eat some crow. We had to eat some humble pie there, and and set more realistic goals for ourselves. And that's what we did. We the price comparisons from things outside of California. If you leave California, virtually every other place is going to be cheaper. I mean, aside from the obvious ones like New York and and other places, but. Um, the wages you're going to be making in other states is going to be less. Now, here's an interesting thing. I had a friend who moved out of California, and though he's making, I think it's 3 or $4 less an hour, he's actually breaking even or, or about the same money um, that he was making in, in 
California because the taxes are different in that state. And I forget where he I forget where he went to. So I'm not going to I'm not going to say where he went because I don't remember. But that's just to paint a picture. Yes, a lot of times when you leave a place like California who typically has higher wages, that's to keep up with the cost of living, even though it doesn't come close to doing that. You go to another place where the wages are a little bit lower. That's typically because what you have to purchase um, from your groceries to, to your rent is going to be cheaper. And I did experience that with my transition here to the Phoenix, Arizona area. And again, every state is going to be different. I did have some uh, initial anxiety, some apprehensions about leaving. Some of it was because of my family. That wasn't a really big factor. One of the things I was worried about is if Arizona or the state I was going to didn't work out, how difficult it would be to go back to California, um, God forbid, if I had to, because since the cost of living is so high, once you move out of state and you are making a certain income, it's hard to transition back into a higher cost of living again. Uh, but, you know, why would you want to do that? There's the politics, there's the laws, there's the bills, there's the unaccountability there. And some for some people, uh, that is home for them. You know, I was born and raised there, so that is going to be home. That's where um, all of my family is. But I'm not going to be living paycheck from paycheck trying to survive and making ends meet just to stay in a place because it's home. You know, home is where the heart is and anywhere you can find that you're comfortable and it fits your needs, you can call that home. And that is what has happened here. And um, I'm happy that I have been able, so far things are working out for me. Again, I wasn't looking for greener grass on the other side because every place has its ups and its downs I was trying to make a feasible living for myself and my wife and we're both partners in this and we had talked about it Um, the time frame that it took from the decision from the time we decided that we were going to leave California it didn't take long for us to actually leave we were good at saving money Um, it so that that was part of how long it took for us to eventually leave i say it took about six months from this when we decided yeah we're going to leave and after that we were saving up the money and we were looking actively for places you can go i mean at first we're looking you know on zillow and all those places for the homes and then after we realized we're going to be doing some renting at apartments we completely changed our search criteria went straight for looking at apartments we actually came out here in september of 2018 uh to 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 physically look at these places so we took some time off of work and we 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 either yeah we drove out here we took a rental car we drove out here and we checked out those apartments that we had checked out online in california to make sure they were uh, up to our standards we went and we visited we talked to the landlords and um after doing some deciding we found a place we put our names down and again that was coming here beforehand to actually look at the places we were looking at online because we didn't want to have to be in another state look at some apartments and then come in here at the uh, at the last minute our only options and just grab whatever was available to us we we wanted to make sure that it was going to work and it did so a fair amount of research needs to go into the place that you're looking um that you're looking to go to so that way you know that I, I've said it before that you're not going to find yourself in a position where you were in before uh, if you're leaving for political reasons make sure you understand the politics in the places that you're going and where they lean and, and the policies and legislations that they tend to enact I'm an advocate for voting locally on the city and state level because those are what really impact you the most. I mean, your your stoplights and your your sales taxes, those are what's going to really help you out and when you're when you're voting and i i said it before when it gets grander, you know, on the presidential level, I understand there's people who um they they have their doubts about that and it's understood because there's a lot of voter fraud that goes on. But moving on, I I did want to touch on the anxiety aspect because I think that that is a bigger hurdle than sometimes even finances. Uh, I I know some people don't want to leave their 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 comfort zone because they have friends and family and they're kind of um, apprehensive about making it on their own because it's 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 a new thing. It's it's like going to a new job that you haven't done before. You have to you know, learn get over the learning curve, and it's the same thing when you're moving as well. There's things that 
no matter how much you look up on the internet, no matter how many people that you listen to, it's always going to be things that are going to surprise you and things that you weren't able to anticipate and just like I told you about me and my wife when we were going to buy a home out here there were unforeseen costs and things we couldn't anticipate so we decided to change our approach and we went for renting to see if we were going to like it out here to make it a permanent uh, residence for us. Sometimes finances isn't the only reason uh, as, as, a, as a motivating factor for some people to leave. I know uh, I discussed it before that politics is a big reason why people are leaving out of California. And yes, that also is a reason why I left. There's really an amalgamation of reasons, but it's kind of sad that it got to the point where You know, even if I could afford it in California, I still might not have stayed just because of some of the things that go on there. The oppressive laws, the the totalitarian agendas. I will say the the liberalism there is, is becoming more extreme, more far left than anything moderate or central or, you know, anything that you would expect to have a rational conversation with if you accidentally say a trigger word or, or something that sets somebody off. You know, you lose credibility with that individual and now you're at each other's throat. So there's a lot of that that goes on. And where I was at, initially I was in the Bay Area, California's Bay Area, and just 30 minutes outside of San Francisco. And that's where I spent. I was born and raised there. And after I got priced out of that area, I moved up to the Northern California region, the Sacramento region. And I was there for you know, five or six years until that place started getting expensive. You know, you were able to find a uh, one bedroom, two baths, some, you know, modest, modest sized apartments for about 500, 600 bucks and in relatively good places. Um, after spending five years there and we were looking at, OK, we're going to find a new place. Those places had almost doubled for the same price and you weren't getting anything more. So that's why I said it wasn't feasible for for me and my wife to be able to stay here because finances played um, more of a major role than anything. But again, even if we had the money, it's it's the politics and the, the, the people and the attitudes and the agendas, the, everything that's sort of shifting. I don't recognize the state I live in and I definitely don't recognize my home city because gentrification is taking over and you're, you're seeing the the disparage, you know, the transience, the poverty. And when you have this political unaccountability, you have these sanctuary state policies. A lot of this contributes to the trouble that we see there. The, the politicians, the legislators there who are passing a lot of these laws, you know, 55 gallons per day, um, gas tax, water tax, uh, they have the money to absorb these costs. You know, if the cost of gas goes up to 4 or $5, these people who are making good money, they can afford that. It's the people who don't have the money to absorb those costs that are going to be the most um, economically impacted. And there's more people um, who can't afford those things than there is people who can't afford it. And one's got to wonder if there isn't some drive to get a certain class of people out of California and get a certain class of people in. But yeah, you should have seen all the fun I had trying to get out of California. You know, me and my wife, we had ordered a, well, we had reserved a budget truck, one of those trucks that you use, you know, you just load up and you you drive them down to wherever you're going. It's kind of like a U-Haul. And that budget truck, the 45 minutes before we were supposed to pick it up, the day we were supposed to pick it up, they called and said that the truck had broken down. And they didn't have another truck available. They didn't have the same size truck available. They had a bigger truck available, but they would have to charge us more. And they had they said they were going to honor this um, discount price, and they weren't able to help us out at all. As a matter of fact, they suggested we went to a competitor. So we went to a competitor, U-Haul, which who we didn't want to go with initially because their prices were so bad. The day of we went to U-Haul, they were able to give us a truck the same size as budget, I think a little bigger for cheaper. And we went with them and and drove out, you know, to Arizona and and it went without a hitch. Now, I could have only imagined if I were to me and my wife were to take that budget truck, we would have been broken down, you know, on the side of the road. And I think that's interesting because the first time we drove out here to Sacramento or to Arizona in the rental car to check out the places we wanted to to rent. That's all I saw on the side of the roads were those budget trucks. So maybe that was a, a was a warning there. But these are some of the the intricacies that that goes on when you're thinking about moving because you have to wonder how you're going to transport your stuff. How are you going to afford to do it? Where are you going? Are there jobs there? 
and what 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 is the housing market like there or are you able to get into you know your, your condo townhome or apartment depending on what you're looking for if you have kids that's another story because you're going to have to consider schools maybe maybe child care so it, it it's going to depend on, on a person it, so it's not there's not something that a, a broad cookie cutter you know standard i can give you that says works for everybody just what worked for me was first in my mind knowing that i wanted to leave and taking the steps necessary to make that happen and like i said in my last video um, we don't make a lot of money so saving uh, money was one of the biggest things we had and choosing the place we wanted to go you know luck is going to play into it whether whether you're talking about uh, uh if you have a job that's compatible with transitioning out of state because that's really one of the big things that hold people back. I already said family is another big thing that can hold people back on whether they want to, you know, leave their loved ones or their support groups. Uh, but if you are struggling and you are suffering and you know that you want to uh, be able to get out there and just not deal with what you're dealing with anymore, there are places for you. You just want to make sure you look in the right places. And, and those places are going to be determined by... Uh, you what what you want where you want to go and what you're able to afford you know th these are just these are just realistic issues that we have to think about when we're when we're talking about something like this uh, if you think california is imploding and you you, you want to get out many people you know got out after the oroville uh, dam scare when people um, downstream of the oroville dam thought that they were going to get flooded out and Sacramento was one of those areas. There's just a lot of issues there in California. Just the, the, the poor management of the forest, the wildfires, which aren't exactly 100% kosher, especially if you look at things like direct energy weapons and advanced tactical lasers. I mean, I believe they're trying to burn people off the land. And my line of thinking isn't too far out of line with what others believe uh, go on as, as well. Because there's a lot of nefarious and sinister agendas that are instituted, not just in California, but across the nation. But don't be afraid to consult uh, realtors because they can give you information. They're not going to be able to tell you too much about like neighborhoods because they can get in trouble with the people that they're employed by. But uh, you can go online and look at crime heat maps and area codes that you're looking to or zip codes that you're looking to um, take up residence and they have a lot of tools available for the average person when they have questions about uh, how to make this transition because for some people you know moving can be a really big deal for others it's not so much I think it just comes down uh, to the individual uh, the, and, and the resources they have at their disposal that is probably one of the biggest factors that's going to come down into be able to making any kind of big transition but I, I also want to reiterate that it's not most people put a lot of mental barriers in their head because they think it's an impossible task or it's just uh, too much on their plate for them to to consume and it's not necessarily the case if you've already um, made and again I'm reiterating if you've already you know moved from apartment to apartment or rented homes or bought homes then you know what the process is like and it's not much difference the only difference is is the, is the mileage and how far you're going and you leaving the, the people that you know but again if those aren't an issue for you you won't have a problem finding yourself something that you're looking for just don't expect the grass to be 100% greener on the other side because as I've said before every place is going to have its ups and its downs and uh, I, I don't want you to end up being disappointed because you think that one place was going to be completely better than another I think if we're trying to run from certain issues um, blindly that we can end up in worse issues and, and worse places than we didn't anticipate because maybe we didn't think things through there's often a lot of hidden fees associated with this and what I mean by hidden fees is it, it's more than just paying for your transportation for all your stuff it's more than just paying for the down payment the deposit it's it's things like yeah, paying for your car registration again your smog things like paying for um, you know your, your, your license plate and your license and uh, you're changing your address over and uh, making sure all your documents and bank information and your mail is a trend those you know those are the nuances that are going to come with it and things that to take into consideration um, again don't don't be overwhelmed by it if, if you've done this process before it's it's 
it's really not much different it's but again if there's any questions you guys have i'm thinking about making a live stream and answering those directly uh, i think that there's not going to be a 20 minute part three to this but i will definitely cover anything else that comes across you know my mind this is a a big subject into my bye bye california series uh, you know, I have four or five videos discussing some of the issues and things going on there, which is why part of the reason why people have been leaving. So I don't want to uh, repeat myself too much. I just wanted to go ahead and put this out here because I thought it was just a little more collected and coherent than my my previous uh, video where I had talked about if there was any fears and I talked about a game plan as well and, and similar things sort of reiterating it but just putting it out there again if you guys have any questions or comments concerns about how this process works I'd be more than happy to answer those in the comment section and if I get you know a lot of inquiries about this I'll probably have to make a follow-up and I'd really like to get into some more aspects of what's going on on the geo political scale and also get away from politics and talk about more about the esoteric aspects of what's really been going on um, the nefarious underpinnings of the tyrannical world order the new world order the beast system the paranormal and the supernatural because it, it really seems like with our technology now blending in with the uh, the biotechnological being able to blend the technology in with your body i think that's opening up new realms of perception and i've always adhered to uh, I, I know we're going in a different direction here so i'm going to wrap this up but i've always adhered to there being more to this reality than meets the eye and that this technology might be in some way um, connected to that other world and those other aspects but those are that's what i'd like to get into after you know i i do a few updates maybe on the government shutdown and talk about a few more things that come across my radar but california carter is going to be signing off now go ahead and check back for content since i have my i'm, I'm getting i'm upgrading my equipment i'll be able to produce a higher quality content faster um i don't want to make too too many uh, videos i don't want to spam people's inboxes i want to make sure that i'm hitting the nail on the head in my topics but uh thanks for stopping by T take care of your guys self california carter signing off